go on to the this is going to sell. Um, our first first sell high of the, of the week is kind of a, a hot take, a hot steak, um, and that is Jay Ajah. Jay Ajah, you mean OJ Simpson? Yes, OJ Simpson, exactly. <laughs> uh, Jay Ajah, but did you see those games, man? <laughs> Did you see those games? Back to back two hundred yard games. Like they were they were very nice performances. Um the Buffalo one especially was like pretty impressive. Um so good for him. Good job, Jay Ajayi. Um he's not he's not gonna rush for two hundred yards. I'll I'll be bold and say he's not gonna rush for two hundred yards again this season. I th- I think that's I think we can say that pretty safely. I'm gonna go ahead and say he'll he'll never rush for two hundred yards again in his career. I think that's probably safe to say too. Um <laughs> and he's coming off back to back games, and so even if his name doesn't mean that much so like consecutive production is enough for a running back in any team to probably pay like a pretty good price for him or at least consider him an rb1 um and if the volume continues from here which is kind of a big if because you know he didn't have it until week six and then he gets it for two weeks and they have their buy who knows what their plan is coming out of the buy that's when teams adjust the most so who even knows if he's still the, the workhorse um but even if he is regression is coming and his schedule is rough. It's not good. Yeah, it's no. not good at all. It starts with the Jets this week, which is bad. Uh, it's pretty up and down. Like Jets are bad. San Diego's all right. They're not. They're not as bad against the running back as the numbers look. Like they they allow the most touchdowns to the running back, but the the yardage isn't really there as much. So it's sort of the numbers are kind of skewed. They're actually not that bad of a run defense. Yeah. Um, and then the Rams are a good run defense. Then he gets the Niners. That's like the holy grail matchup. But then Baltimore, yep. Arizona, Jets, and then we're, we're in the fantasy playoffs, and you don't you don't want you don't want facing Arizona and Jets in the first two weeks of your playoffs. So that's you don't want you don't want Arizona in the first week because yeah. that could. I mean, if you lose that first week of the fantasy playoffs, you're done. You're done. Yeah. And I wouldn't feel confident starting Jay Ajahi against Arizona in the first week of the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And right now, his value is sky high. I mean, even sky before his me. first two hundred. Sky High Academy. Now, <laughs> even before his first 200-yard game, he had a another 10-plus point performance because he got into the end zone. So he's had three consecutive double-digit weeks, and the last two have been like monstrous games. Mm-hmm. Where if you are selling Jay Ajahi, his buy is done now. So that can also help your narrative. Like, hey, you're in bye week hell. Well, here I am, Jay Ajahi. He's back after his two consecutive monster games. You know you want him. But another thing is the Dolphins. The Dolphins. I mean, you have to have confidence in their offense. And I know that their offensive line is actually, when healthy, they're really, really good. They're yeah. one of the best in the league. But they've only been healthy for two games. And Jay Ajahi has benefited from that. An injury could happen. I mean, that's the schedule, first and foremost. Look at the schedule. Second, look at their team. I mean, the games where he went nuclear... They played a Pittsburgh team that lost Ben Roethlisberger, and they had a lead, and they were able to kind of just grind away. And Jay Ajahi was, you know, a huge benefactor. Then they had a game against Buffalo, uh, and like you said, the Buffalo game was really, really impressive. Actually, yeah. just watching that game, he kind of just he won them that game. He ran all over Buffalo. Yeah. But the schedule, I mean, geez, if Miami finds himself trailing in these games which they easily could. They're not a great team, and they don't have a great defense. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, they play teams like San Diego, who could put up big numbers against them, and that's one of his positive matchups where he might possibly get game scripted out. Uh, they play Arizona, New York, and Buffalo in the playoffs, which doesn't... Jets, okay, that's tough. Buffalo doesn't look terrible considering he just ran all over them. But... These are games I don't know if I feel confident with Miami winning. Uh, no. So there's a whole bunch of factors going into this Jay Ajahi thing. But the number one is just his value right now. If he has a bad game against New York, then people might start thinking, well, okay, he's come back to earth. I'm not yeah. going to pay tip-top value. But right now he is being sold as a league winner. Mm-hmm. Jay Ajahi is a league winner. He's the workhorse back. We'll see how he's utilized out of the buy, but I don't think his value will ever get higher than this. So go ahead and trade him because right now you could probably get RB1 value, uh, RB2 value, or you can package him with somebody else to get like a, a stud possibly with what his value is right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I'm with you on that. It's uh, 
yeah, his name isn't worth that much. So as soon as he has one bad game, it's like, never mind. This is the real Jay Jai. Um, I've been having this problem with, uh, you know, C Mike, who we mentioned as a sell last week, and I even started trying to sell him last week. But because he had had one bad game, it was already like, no, nope, C Mike's not a real thing. Um, yeah. And you, you got to stay ahead of that with guys like that. Their, their production doesn't match their name brand, and you're looking to sell them. And Ajay is the perfect example of that. So, yeah, he shouldn't be too hard yeah. to sell this week either, I don't think. I don't think, yeah. I mean, and you just hit on a, an important point with name value and fantasy is, mm-hmm. is most fantasy football players. The name means everything. So that's why there are guys yeah. like Allen Robinson who people still don't want to trade because they're Allen Robinson, even though he's been so bad this year that, I mean, you should have dumped him off weeks ago. But then you have somebody like Jay Ajahi who, even if he continues to light it up, as soon as he has, you know, a bad game or uh, two bad games, that's it. I mean, look what happened with Jordan Howard. He had his couple games and people were kind of like, all right, Jordan Howard might be a thing, but he's a rookie, he plays mm-hmm. for Chicago. Nobody was really buying on to the Jordan Howard hype train. He uh, has a couple of down weeks where Kadeem Carey is kind of eating into his workload, and then all of a sudden, and, and to be fair, I don't think anybody predicted what he did against Minnesota. I mean, Jordan Howard came out and just lit it up. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you see this all the time where people don't really buy into a player as soon as they start to have bad weeks. Yeah. And that's going to happen with Ajahi, but not not to beat a dead horse. You can get a lot for Ajahi. I went out and traded Ajahi in a package to get Zeke uh, earlier yeah. today. So I mean, you also gave some... Devonta Freeman, so it was Devonta like, Freeman. I mean, that's that's like a, that's a fair deal for sure, but yeah, that's like that's the kind of thing you do. You package Ajahi with someone whose like name means a little bit more and you can land like a stud probably if it's the right team. Yeah, I mean, I Freeman is is a stud. I like Freeman a lot, mm-hmm. but I like Zeke and I like Zeke's schedule yeah. the rest of the season. Zeke's in that like uh, top like god tier of like those three running backs, like DJ Zeke and Le'Veon, that are just like league winners at this point. Yeah. All right. Uh, sticking with the running back theme, uh, and a similar theme actually uh, is mm-hmm. Frank Gore. Franklin gonna say... Delano Gorzavel. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I didn't, know, I didn't know where I was going when I started that. Uh, and then at, when I was saying Delanor, I was like, here it comes. I can feel this. Here it comes. <laughs> Gores <about>. that, <laughs> that, that was just a moment of ad-libbing beauty right there. And that's why you watch Bench Dash. And that's why, for, for those kind of gems. Uh, yeah, Frank Gore, um, he's bad. He didn't used to be bad. He used to be really good at running back, but he's old. He's, he's 33, right? He's old um, as dirt. He hasn't been like terribly efficient this year. Um the volume's even been fading over the last couple of games, but he keeps scoring touchdowns, which keeps the numbers up. Over they the do. last two games, he had he went, you know, he only had 61 rushing yards, but then 22 receiving yards and a touchdown. Then again, it's Chiefs, only 37 rushing yards, but 25 yards and a touchdown. Um, that is nice to see, but a that won't that won't keep up. You don't usually if a player most of their production is coming from touchdowns, you want to sell them. Like if the yardage doesn't match up with it then it's, you know, you want to get out before the touchdowns disappear. Um, and this week he gets Green Bay, which, you know, is a good matchup. You know, we we saw Freeman struggle against them last week, and at this point in their careers, Freeman is much better than Frank Gore. Yeah, Green Bay is still the toughest defense against fantasy running backs. Yeah, only Zeke has been successful against them, and that's because of that line and because of Zeke. Yeah. The, the Eagles game for Zeke really proved it to me that it's not all the line. Like, he had a few runs where, like, um, what was it, Doug Free, like, was just not playing very well. And, like, they would break yeah. down. And he would make, like, a sick cut and hurdle over someone. And it was like, oh, that was all Zeke. Yeah. Um, yeah, Zeke is the real deal. I mean, he's good. Let's anyway, back to Frank Gore. That. And Frank Gore's not. Okay, <laughs> Frank, like, Frank Gore's not. But, yeah, he gets Green Bay this week, and, you know, which is bad. So he might regress, and then he gets the bye week. No one is usually buying running back during a bye unless they, you know, are stashing them long term. No one's stashing Frank Gore long term. Um, and then and after Tennessee. that, and then Tennessee, which is bad, it lines up a little bit after that, you know. And his playoff schedule isn't that bad. Houston, Minnesota, Oakland. We just saw Minnesota inexplicably get run all over. I don't know if that's a new thing that's going to keep happening. I don't really know what to make of that. <laughs> yeah, I mean. I think that's more of an outlier game. I think Minnesota is still an elite defense. It was 
the fact that their offense could not stay on the field was doing no favors yeah. to the Vikings defense. But the playoff schedule, I mean, you have Houston and Minnesota as the first two weeks. And now Houston, they have an elite pass defense and they're kind of middle of the road against mm. the run. And we have we saw Frank Gore put up 100 yards against Houston. So it's not a terrible matchup, but it's also not a home run matchup. No, I think just looking at the next three weeks, that's where you want to focus. Yeah, and Gore's one of those players where... Honestly, you could sell him now and probably rebuy him in like a month and like it, he wouldn't be that expensive because no one looks at Frank Gore and like here is like my RB1 or even like an RB2 they feel confident in. But right now, because his production has been pretty good lately, you could probably sell him as like a, I don't know, mid-range to high-range RB2, which would be I great. I mean, he is through eight weeks. We're halfway through the year, more than halfway through the fantasy year. He's the RB10. Yeah. He's an RB one right now, which is which is insane. Um, it doesn't feel that way, yeah. and no one you try to sell him way, to yeah. is gonna pay as an RB one, even if he technically is one. But like selling him as like a higher RB two, you know, selling him the same range as you would sell like um like Latavius Murray, I guess, you know. Um, yeah. But I'd rather have Latavius Murray going forward than Frank Gore, you know. So. Oh yeah, I would as well. Um, I mean, just looking at the lines that Frank Gore's put up is. I mean, it's it's impressive considering that he is yet to put up under 7.8 points this season. That's his lowest output, mm-hmm. 7.8. All but two of his eight games have been over double digits. Uh, he had a 7.8 performance and a 7.9 performance, but then every other game he's been over 10 points, which is ridiculous. So it gives you that floor. But then again, you're right. Uh, you probably can't sell him one for one for like an elite piece Mm -hmm. at this point but i think he's a perfect guy to sell in a package right now yeah because his schedule is so bad for the next month really you can't i mean i don't expect them to really be in any of these games and the tennessee game they'll they'll compete at least but green bay i think indy's gonna get run over uh, the bye week, I mean, bye just dominates everyone they play. I mean, I've yet to see anybody put up <laughs> any points on the bye. Uh, Tennessee uh, at home, that game will probably be competitive. But then again, Tennessee is one of those teams that they're very good against the run and they're not very good against the pass. Yeah. So I mean, I think more part of this is that, like, the Colts are not an elite offense this year. They haven't been in two years. Um, but they're still perceived that way because it's Andrew Luck and he is just like his, his brand name will forever be elite quarterback despite – what he's actually doing on a field. I mean, this, the Colts are a good offense to stream a defense against, which you never would have thought of doing two years ago. But at this point, it's like that defense is at home and they're at least decent. It's like a totally acceptable play. Um, well, to be fair, to be fair, I have to uh, give my boy Andrew Luck some love. Stanford alum. He is the number two fantasy quarterback right now. He's, so, he's been good in fantasy, but in terms of like, He's real just life. Been, yeah, turnover prone. It's, you know, most of the production comes in garbage time. Um, his, uh, his offensive line, they might have one of the worst offensive lines in, in football. Yeah. If you disregard I mean, what we saw from Minnesota and Seattle. Yeah. But it's bad. None of this is really against him. It's just that this offense as a whole is not functioning like an elite offense. Yeah. You know, maybe with Moncrief back, that changes. I and mean, a lot of Gore's big production coincided with Moncrief being out because they lost a key red zone threat. Um, and now that he's back, you know, these touchdowns that Gore has gotten, you know, five touchdowns in the last seven games, that's, that's going to regress. That's sustainable. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So sell Franklin Delanor Gorzevelt. <laughs> or, I mean, he's another name you could probably throw out to a team that's in bye week hell yeah. for a player that's on their bye. You know who I'd happily do in a one for one? Um, Frank Gore for like Alshon Jeffrey. Because Alshon oh. is still like a, a buy for me, you know, because he had like an okay game, but the owner probably wasn't blown away. And now he's on buy, but like Cutler's back. That's somebody who I wanted to mention, but we mentioned him last week. But just yeah. as an asterisk buy, still go out and try to get Alshon still Jeffrey. Go get Alshon. Because yeah. if Jordan Howard is, is, you know, pounding the rock in the running game, they have Cutler back zinging it. Their offense is going to be a lot better than people anticipate. And Cutler goes to Alshon Jeffrey. He even throws to Alshon Jeffrey when nobody's when Alshon's not looking at him. <laughs> I mean that that He's... was like it was like ugly, but it was also encouraging to see his willingness to just like force feed Alshon under any circumstance. 
Um, Did you see the play where the ball yeah. hit him in the back of the <laughs> it, head? <laughs> it felt like a game of Madden because when you play Madden, yeah. that happens sometimes. Like the receiver just doesn't turn around, and I was like, oh, this is this this is a total Madden moment. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'll be so bold as to say Alshon is a a top seven wide receiver the rest of the season. I don't know. Man, I, I think he's seven a wide randomly. receiver one. Yeah, he's a wide, he's a wide one receiver one the rest of the way. The rest of the way. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's move on. That's enough about uh, Franklin Delano or um, let's <laughs> Another old man running back. Another old. Yeah, not as old. I mean, not really old. He's just perceived as being ancient because of the injuries. Um, Jonathan Stewart, <laughs> Jay Stu Stu. Um, yeah, I thought you were gonna you're gonna roll off another president, but I didn't, you didn't go. No, with I couldn't. It. I don't know enough presidents. Um, only only Gorzevelt. <laughs> um, American education system for you. All right. Uh, let's go. Jonathan Stewart, this one is, like, really simple. Um, he has four touchdowns in the last two games he's played. That's, that's not going to keep monster happening. numbers. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, two 20-point performances, right? Yeah. I mean, now's the time. You look at Jonathan Stewart. Now, here's the asterisk with Jonathan Stewart. He has the second easiest schedule for the running back, but you can use this as your narrative. Right. Mm -hmm. Because with Jonathan Stewart, he's bound to get hurt. I mean, come on. (laughs) I mean, he helped nobody during the fantasy playoffs last year because he got hurt, even though he had a great second half of the year. I mean, he was hurt the entire fantasy playoffs. Yeah. I mean, the injury concern is real with him. With most players, when that's brought up, it's like, well, you know, you can't predict that. But Jonathan Stewart, he's it just always seems to be dinged up. Um, And the. He's about to go into L.A., who are – that's a good run defense, and they're coming out of the bye, so they're fresh. They've been game planning for this for their entire lives, basically. Um, for Jonathan Stewart in particular. For Jonathan Stewart, in part- exactly that. Um, <laughs> and I think this whole thing of, like, him getting these, like, you know, one-yard touchdowns, is, that's going to regress because I don't – you know, we saw Cam running a touchdown himself against the Saints, and it just it didn't happen against Arizona. But the narrative you can sell is Cam got hurt running, so he's going to run less, and so now Stewart's getting the goal line work instead. Um, I don't think that's actually the case. I think that's just kind of, you know, things fell that way the last couple of weeks because he's always gotten some goal line work. It's not like it's never been any running back gets a goal line carry. Um, but I think that evens out over the rest of the season. We see, you know, Cam start to run it in more. The touchdowns are going to disappear again for Stewart. And be back to one of those, like, you know, seven to nine point RB2s, which is fine. But right now you can sell him as like a, a legit RB1. Oh, yeah. And I mean, if you look at his week against Arizona, Arizona has a very good run defense. Let's not Mm -hmm. say anything otherwise. But Jonathan Stewart, uh, he I mean, his efficiency wasn't great. He was under four yards a carry. Mm -hmm. He was this kind of catapulted by the two touchdowns. And then even in the week before, he had good numbers against New Orleans, but not amazing numbers in terms of running efficiency. Yeah. He had 19 for 85, which is just over four yards a carry. So the two touchdowns, four touchdowns in the last two weeks. Uh, yeah, you can sell them for a lot right now. Yeah. Especially with the schedule. There's a lot of narratives you can use to your advantage here. Look at what he did last year in the second half. Cam is getting banged up. Jonathan Seward's going to be the premier goal line back look at his schedule second easiest the rest of the way mm-hmm. uh i mean his playoff schedule is is a dream and that might help you sell him as well we i'm not usually an advocate of selling somebody uh that has such a good playoff schedule i mean his week 15 and 16 are washington and atlanta mm-hmm. who are just terrible yeah. uh in terms of run defense san diego is his, his first matchup as well and they give up a lot of touchdowns. So he does have a very good playoff schedule. But like you said, L.A. next, then Kansas City. Uh, so the next two weeks might be a little bit rough for him. And yeah, I mean, he's a he's a soft sell. You know, whereas Ajayi and Gore are like, go out and sell him right now. Stewart's like, sell him if someone's willing to treat him like an RB1 or like a, like a higher-end RB1. Then go ahead and do it. Like, if you can package, like, Ajayi and Stewart for, like, a, a top-five running back, like an actual one, you know, if there's a running back needy team that's sitting there, if the like the Zeke owner or like the Bell owner is sitting there and they're like you know two and six and they're like I gotta win right now and they don't have any other running backs, a giant Stewart might be able to land you one of them. Now how about this? How about one Lamar Miller who is on a bye this week? If you are set up on your team or you maybe figure you're gonna make the playoffs, I mean you never want to assume that, but mm-hmm. if you have a solid record, 
and you can afford to acquire somebody who's on a buy, you have startable players, you can go out and get somebody like Lamar Miller. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think definitely. I would, I would take Lamar Miller over Jonathan Seward every day of the week. Yeah. Uh, and you might be able to swing a trade like that yeah. because Lamar had, well, he had an okay game because of the touchdown, but, I mean, it wasn't great in terms of efficiency either. No. So you can maybe sell like a Jonathan Seward or a Frank Gore plus another piece to get a Lamar Miller this mm-hmm. week. Or you might be able to, honestly, you might be able to swing Jonathan Seward for Lamar Miller straight up. Because Lamar Miller, enough, yeah. Because Lamar Miller's had his one monster game, but outside of that, he's kind of been floating around. He has a really high floor, which is good, but he's you expect the monster numbers from Lamar Miller. And Jonathan Seward just put up two monster games, so that's something you might be able to swing. Maybe like a mid-level wide receiver along with Jonathan Seward to go ahead and get a Lamar Miller there. Yeah, I feel it. Uh, that's enough about Jonathan Stewart. I think we've made our point. Your love child, Jonathan Stewart? He he was in like July. Yeah. And, then, uh, and then I cooled off of him. And then I, now I hate him and I, and I want to get rid of him. Even though I don't and own him anywhere. You you left him on the stoop of the uh, the, the fire station. <laughs> yeah. your, your love child, Jonathan Stewart, you're like, I can't deal with him anymore. <laughs> I can't do this. I'm not ready to be a parent of Jonathan Stewart. A la Shameless season do you watch Shameless? Yes, I did. I haven't seen the last season, though. Uh, one of the characters tries to do that, and I think the most recent season is Shameless. That's a big oh, spoiler. spoiler I didn't bro. say who it was, though. So Damn. Yeah. Anyway, oh. that, is, that is it for our buys and our sells, our trade, and our talk. Yes. <laughs> the gym <laughs> is, 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 is Franklin Delano Gorzevelt. That, if you only take away one thing from this, it's Franklin Delano Gorzevelt. <laughs> <laughs> and if you own Frank Gore, you should change your team name to that right now. Yeah, I mean, maybe don't just sell him just so you can have that team name. I mean, I don't I mean, own that's him, a, and I might change my team name anyway. That that's a really, league-winning name that's, right there. Is, there. is there a merit to a strategy where you play against some? when you're playing against someone, you change your team name to a player you don't own just to get in their head? You know, like you, you change <laughs> it to that, and they're like, well, you don't even own Frank Gore, and it just confuses them, and then they get flustered and mess up setting their lineup. Yeah, you're really into like these <laughs> fantasy superstitions, like these mind games. I don't yeah, know if, for all the listeners out there, anyone who's watching this, comment below if you guys have any weird like fantasy superstitions that you do, or if you're one of those teams that benches everybody, <sighs> like Leo. You bench I, your entire team, so some reason this is going to cause the other team to panic because they have no idea who you're going to play because that definitely affects their team, right? <laughs> it if, shouldn't. If they don't know. <laughs> it shouldn't, but I've had a couple times. Not It hasn't worked at all this season, but I've had a couple times in the last couple of seasons where I do it and the other owner will text me on like Friday or Saturday being like, what's, what's going on with your team? And they, and they just get all upset and flustered. Um, I don't remember what the outcome was, but it was at least enjoyable for me. That hasn't happened at all this season to the point where I've, I've stopped benching because it's just not. It's, it's harder for me to look up my team when everything is benched yeah the only way i could ever see that working is if somebody assumes because of the weird starting lineup you're throwing out there or maybe you put all your bench players in yeah that's another strategy uh so the projection total is really low the only way i could see that possibly having an effect is if the other owner got so confident that they were going to win that week that they ended up making some bonehead move Mm. where they like made a trade because they're already looking a week ahead, uh, <laughs> or they they went without a kicker or defense. They'd rather keep all their position players. I've seen teams do this, like, oh, yeah. I got this win, soda. So they <laughs> just didn't play a kicker, and then they all of a sudden, you know, ten minutes before kickoff, you're like, oh, just kidding, swap in all your starters, and then they're tilted. <laughs> um, I will say, I mean, I've never. Seen, I have I've played a matchup without a kicker once. I didn't want to drop a player. I don't remember what happened. It was a bad idea though. I felt like an idiot <laughs> while I was doing it. Um, <laughs> but though, I will say that like a lot of people will base their flex off of like, do I need the floor? Or do I need the ceiling? And so if That's they see, so if they see you sitting there like, oh man, their team is projected really low, and they just like don't look at your bench for some reason. <laughs> it's like oh, it's projected really low. I'll just play my safer flex because I wouldn't need that many points. Maybe that makes a difference. It could, and then their like boomer bus play goes off on their bench, and they're sitting there just pulling their hair out, like, I, uh, yeah, I've been had the mind games. There it is. So it's not bench your your team; it's start your bench players, and then the last second flip them. Yeah, 
Uh, I have a thing where I I can't really, I don't really watch my players Mm. because every time I watch my players, I feel that they'd never perform. So I'm one of those box score warriors or Twitter. I have all the different apps up where I'm kind of just updating on what's happening, but I'm never watching. That's one of my superstitions because every time I feel like, oh, I'm super excited to watch Lamar Miller eat this game. And then I tune (laughs) in and he's getting like three yards of carry. And I'm like, what is going on? I can't handle this. So I change it and just watch the Raider game because that's much more enjoyable. I've been doing more of that lately. I used to go to a bar and watch like every game. And now it's it's just like not even it's too stressful trying to keep up with that many games at once. And you feel like you didn't watch any of them. Um, so yeah. now it's just been like I'll pick like one game at each time or like one or two games because my buddy has like two TVs at his apartment. So like two games at each time, watch them regardless of five people. Oh, bro, not. don't go flaunting your economic status at our, all of the viewers. <laughs> Two TVs is not a big deal, what? man. I mean, you know, he has a roommate, and they each have one, so it's less impressive. <laughs> Um, not all of us fantasy players get to watch two TVs at the same time. Yeah, man. If you don't, your life sucks. Uh, all right, <laughs> let's let's all right, let's let's, uh, let's soda this up. Um, like, comment, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Um, you know, tell tell us your your fantasy superstitions in the comments if you feel like it. If you don't, yeah. Do you do you watch games Stark naked? James Stark naked. James Stark's naked. Boom. Um, yeah, and we there will is. we will catch you with sneaky starts here in a day or two. And or right now. Or right now. <laughs> what? If this was like a, a playlist, maybe. Um, and they were watching it all on like Saturday night, like time to binge watch all of Ben Stash's content. That's my Saturday night. Well, I mean, I'm sure there are at least like one or two people that do that. There was one guy. Right, you, guys? you saw it on Twitter. It was uh, our number one fan, Florida Flamingos, was tweeting at us shout about. Shout out to Florida Flamingos. Shout out to, he was about sneaky starts on Saturday night, and I was at a Halloween party, and I'm like, I'm drunk. And I'm like, I don't know what to, and then like, luckily you like responded this and like a, cleared it up. This is a family show. I was, family oh, show. I was, I'd, I'd had a lot of soda. Um, there we go. And like, you you replied and like cleared it up for him. Um, and he responded being like, oh, thanks. I wanted to, you know, pop on sneaky, put sneaky starts on my TV for my Saturday night. And I was like, holy, what? That's how you know we've made it, man. <laughs> That's a super fan right there. Yeah, we've made it to somebody's big screen. Yeah, man, that, that was Ooh. that was a nice moment for me. It was the happiest I think I've ever been. Which, uh... The happiest since somebody <laughs> quoted our, uh, what was it? Screaming Hot Values. That one, every once Recently. in a while, someone reminds us that like at least a couple of people are watching and listening. Yeah, Screaming Hot Values. That hasn't happened in a while. Oh, wow. You abandoned that drop. Um, oh, all right, let's close now. this up. This, this ending has gone Do off it. the rails. All right. So we probably have our own like uh, superstition segment now. Boom, new video That's happening. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll catch you all on the flippy floppy. Flippy floppies.